Hey there, it's Sonia Miller, speaker, coach, and author. And today I wanted to answer a question that um, actually I generated. And that question is, how do we heal the pain and wounds between feminine and masculine? And the reason I wanted to address this is because um, this topic is something that affects us on a universal level. Everything from our own sense of self to our relationships among all genders to the friendships and families that we want to experience um, to our workplaces and to what we can see playing out on, on a political stage, on a, on a, on a global stage. Um, the pain and the wounds between uh, masculine and feminine among all genders and um, whenever I talk about this it's always really important to me to make sure that I communicate that I'm not talking about gender this is this goes way beyond men and women it goes way beyond gender and it goes way beyond sexuality um, and it affects us as I said in, in deep and far-reaching ways so um, if you've been in my orbit for a while you know that when I'm teaching, when I'm offering solutions uh, and solutions that are not just these like ideas, but things that are very practical and, and apply to your life, I always root us in this um, fundamental presupposition, which is consciousness creates your reality. Consciousness is the cause of every effect. And so what happens a lot of times is when we're looking for solutions to our problems, we tend to look outside of ourselves. We ask questions about how to, how to, or we look for answers in books. And um, what tends to happen is we're often caught in a not most productive cycle that has us address the symptom and not the problem. And for me, the solutions always begin in consciousness. So. What I thought I would be more effective than me just teaching a principle is to actually share a little bit about my own story. Okay, so um, my parents are immigrants from Argentina and I'm a first generation American and all of us are to some degree products of our environment. We're a combination of our nature, how we're wired and nurture, which is, or lack thereof, which is the environment in which we grow and and the things that influence us, whether it's our immediate family, our communities, uh, the time in history. So um, I'm a uh, first generation American and um, I was also raised during the second wave of the women's movement. And um, as, a, as a first generation American uh, young girl growing up at this time in history, um, I was also growing up as a Western, as a Western woman or as a Western girl becoming a woman. And my um, father, um, I was the firstborn and my father was the, uh, I would dare say in many ways, the dominant parent in my, in my world. Um, we had an intact family. Um, but I've often said that I was raised as the eldest male and I got the message growing up you can do anything you want. You can be and do anything you want. Now, my mother um, was a woman who grew up in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And um, she was also Latina. So there's that cultural influence. And um, she was always in my life and in my home. But as far as uh, having a a presence of power, I didn't really perceive that. I really perceived power through uh, what I could do, what I could accomplish. And I got a lot of rewards for that. And again, the part of it was the message from my dad and part of it was the message from my time the, of uh, the, the feminist movement in the 60s. Um, and so I pursued achievement and, and, uh, got lots of positive feedback for it. 
I ended up being uh, 24 years old, um, trading stocks and bonds at a brokerage firm. I became an assistant vice president uh, very early. Um, and while I was really um, proud of myself and accomplishing a lot and achieving a lot, what I found was the more that I achieved, the more contrast I perceived in how much that achievement was not providing me with a sense of fulfillment. So I often say that success does not, does not equal fulfillment necessarily, and yet we pursue success. So after five years in the brokerage firm, I uh, just really acknowledged that I felt like I was dying a spiritual death, and I left, and I moved across country. And so I completely changed my approach to fulfillment, to, to finding the things that I was seeking that I couldn't even really name. I, but basically, I was seeking peace. I was seeking enoughness in myself. I was seeking fulfillment. And so um, I moved across country, and I, I often say that instead of pursuing things in the visible world, I dove into the invisible world of spirituality and psychology and metaphysics and quantum physics and energy and consciousness. And, and basically, if it was invisible, I studied it. <clears throat> and so as I did, um, I also found an organization that taught the distinctions between masculine and feminine energy. And uh, I embarked on this, uh, this women's weekend, an empowerment weekend. And the woman who introduced me to it said, you know, in this uh, weekend, you're going to learn about your power as a woman. And I remember having this thought, which was, my power as a woman, what's that? Like my power as a person, I know, but my power as a woman, I had no sense of... Um, other expressions of power other than all that I was doing. And I felt really, really powerful. Like if I had a goal, I pursued it and I got it, right? So that was the beginning of a journey that's been ongoing for the rest of my life. And at that time, I became aware that I did have a masculine and feminine side. And these masculine and feminine sides are basically qualities or attributes or ways of tapping into parts of myself that could express power. Um, and as I started to explore this, I started to feel a little bit like a split personality. Like I felt like my masculine power was super high and well-developed, but I realized this feminine power, whatever that was, was low. It was malnourished. And so what I discovered was I didn't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I didn't have to throw away the masculine power. That's important and, and valuable and it served me well. Um, so it wasn't about doing anything with the masculine, but it was about nourishing and raising the feminine so that it was equal. And, um, and then once it was equal, I felt even more split because I felt like I had two Sonyas inside of me. So then it was like, how do I integrate it? Um, and, and with that, I started to realize, oh, basically I have this whole aspect of myself that, that really makes amazing things happen, but it's not through pursuing or acting or thinking. It has to do with my beingness. It's who I be. It's what I experience. It's what I feel. It's openness. It's receiving. And the the things that started to open up in my world and my capacity to express my power in in more effective ways started to really open up so um the most recent awareness that i had was when i started to see at a new level professionally um, but also in my personal relationships that I had kind of defaulted back to this masculine model of power. I was analyzing and I was, I was taking action. And I caught myself saying, Sonia, just stop. Just stop the over-functioning. Stop the over-functioning. Stop the over-functioning. You know that, that that can only get you so far. And I heard a little voice that said, okay, Sonia, stopping over-functioning stopping relying on the masculine model isn't 
the same as tapping into the feminine. And I realized, I just got so clear, like the, the absence of the masculine does not equal the power of the feminine. And I realized, oh my gosh, all of this being and feeling and experiencing, I actually don't fully know what the power of that is. What is the power of these things? And what I realize that happens to many of us who have sort of been rewarded and indoctrinated and, and uh, really reinforced like the power of the masculine model, which again is essential, but it's not everything. Um, what happens is here's the masculine that we know well, here's the feminine that many of us don't know well. And instead of really knowing the power of the feminine, we can, and, and embodying it and seeing it and experiencing and expressing it, the best we can do is look at it from the masculine. So instead of like, oh, being and feeling and experiencing, I know the power of that. I And I draw upon it at will as needed. It's like, okay, uh, I don't know, so but I know that this isn't working. So I'm just going to stop doing the, the masculine. But then what happens is we look, the masculine looks at the feminine through the masculine lens. And all of a sudden being, feeling and experiencing and opening and receiving, the best we can do is see that as weak, passive, lazy, unmotivated. So we're stopping the masculine, but we're not really owning the feminine. So I asked myself, it's like, what is the value and the power of the feminine? And maybe some of you listening, it's like, yeah, I already know this, but I didn't, I couldn't touch it. So I simply rested in that question and, and my willingness mantra, which I think some of you know, I'm really big about my willingness mantra was I am willing to know the value, the power of the feminine. I'm willing to, I'm willing to know it. I'm willing to embody it. I'm willing to experience it. I'm willing to express it. And in a very short amount of time, I got the image of the flower. And I realized that the flower is this incredible metaphor for feminine power. Here's this delicate, beautiful being. And it simply is planted in the earth. And it receives, manifests in a feminine way, everything that it needs. And I'm going to dare say, and probably much of what it wants. It doesn't hunt anything. It doesn't examine anything. It doesn't pursue anything. It simply is. And simply by being, being beauty, being, being, not even, you don't have to be beauty, just be. It's just being what it is. Everything comes to it. The sun, the, the, the sunshine, the, the atmosphere, the earth, the water. And not only does it just receive it, it receives the things that are being discarded and transmutes it into beauty. So the sun offers the release of its gaseous, whatever the sun does, solar flares and the UVB. It, it, it does, it, it takes it and photosynthesis happens. Okay. It takes the earth, which is the fertilized by the, the manure of, of animals. It receives that and it, uh, and it grows and blossoms and blooms. Okay. It, um, takes the, the, we take in our breath and then it releases what we no longer, and it turns it into something that we can't use anymore and it receives it and it blossoms and grows. And when it rains or when there's drought, it's just being, and it receives what it needs. Now, the interesting thing about the feminine is that it receives everything and it judges nothing. It doesn't resist, it doesn't attach, it receives, and then what's offered moves through, and then she invites more, and she invites more, and she invites more, okay? So when the manure is uh, offered, she doesn't say, oh, this stinks, I don't want it. She receives it and, and she is blessed. 
Okay. And when we breathe in and expel the, I can't remember, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and, and which, which we cannot use, she receives that and she blossoms and, and blooms and grows. Okay. So she takes whatever is given, receives it, lets it move through her, and then she expands. So she receives everything she needs to live. And beyond that, she contributes to the planet. She contributes to life simply by being. She doesn't go off on a mission and doesn't uh, make things happen, but she, simply in her beingness, she receives, she attracts animals, bees that take, take her, her, what she has to offer and then pollinate the planet. And she contributes her part in all of us having food to eat animals and humans. And she um, attracts humans and all of life, but I can speak for humans that simply sit in her presence and she, her presence causes us to relax and our heart rate calms and we're inspired and maybe we'll write poetry or connect with our spirit. She is beingness. She is presence. And simply by being, she manifests for herself and for the world in contribution. Simply by her presence. Her manifestations, the, the power of the feminine model, manifest through revealing. The masculine model manifests through creating, building, organizing, thinking, solving, action, thought, okay, essential and beautiful. Um, the feminine, so it, it takes the outer world and does stuff with it, and the feminine manifests through, it just revealed, receiving and revealing, receiving and revealing. So, um, wow, I got off on a tangent, but back to the original question, how do we heal the wounds and the pain between feminine and masculine energy, back to consciousness creates, we begin by healing it within us first. And that means notice when you're judging anything about yourself. And if you have the awareness of, oh, I'm judging feminine because somebody told me that, um, inaction is weak or unmotivated or lazy. Look at those judgments and be willing to suspend them and say, you know what? This inaction isn't good. It isn't bad. It simply is. Practice suspending judgment, first noticing them and then letting your awareness simply be. And then you can follow it up with willingness. I am willing to see the value in all expressions of beingness, in all expressions of power. I'm willing to discover and value all expressions of power because the truth is this, you cannot value all expressions of power, masculine and feminine, until you become aware of where you devalue expressions of either. The same is happening with the masculine. There is so much about masculine power that is judged that um, we are disconnecting from, from the essential aspects of masculine models of power and how they are con contributions. They're being judged and I'm seeing, and I think many of us are seeing, tremendous pain being experienced and expressed among all genders because of the judgment and the rejection and the devaluation of expressions of our beingness. So I'll be doing more videos on this, but I wanted to just start with that um, because my passion is to, um, as Albert Einstein says, or said, <laughs> uh, you cannot solve a problem at the level that it was created. When we are stuck in fighting for our rights, we are stuck in fighting. 
And that perpetuates an adversarial relationship between masculine and feminine. And my passion is to elevate the conversation. And what that requires is let's get beyond the fighting for our individual expressions. And let's see if we can be willing to value all expressions. And through that, synergy can happen. And I define synergy as where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That is our opportunity for healing the wounds and the pain between masculine and feminine and valuing all expressions of power and experiencing the beauty and the benefit of that in our individual relationships, in leadership, in all types of uh, work environments and institutional um, scenarios uh, where we can unify different leadership styles Remembering that to unify does not mean to homogenize. It's not about becoming the same. It's about valuing the differences and making all of them available to us. So thanks for listening. I hope this was useful to you. And if it was, please like and share. It helps me reach the people that I'm here to serve. And if you'd like more information, uh, simply go to successforthesoul.com. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.